the next discussion is about uh, the people in the paradise as you know in Quran whenever there is a mentioning of the hell and hellfire resident there will be paradise and there are also eight grades of paradise which Allah has mentioned in the Quran we will come and discuss about it in the due time <laughs> Surely, the God-fearing will be in gardens and streams. Enter here in peace, free of fear. We shall have removed whatever grudge they had in their hearts. Thus making them, brothers, sitting on couches, face to face. No weariness shall touch them, nor will they be expelled from there. Tell my servants that I am the most forgiving. The very merciful. And that my punishment is the painful punishment. So verse 45 to verse 50 talk about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now mentioning about the people of paradise that in al muttaqina fi jannatin ariyun. This is one thing to understand. Paradise is promised for not Muslims, not for Mu'min. It is for the muttaqin, the people who have taqwa. What is a taqwa? Taqwa is described as many ways, but the most easiest way for us to understand is that Taqwa is being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Muslim is the one who declares Shahada la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and that's they believe in their heart and they say by the tongue. Uh, people of uh, Mu'min is the one who is uh, have a pure, full Iman. They do not intend to disobey Allah. They do their best, but then many of them are also at times fall of the uh, station so these are the mu'min and mu'min are the one who are being promised they will be in peace in the world and the hereafter but the jannah is entire quran is mentioned only for the people of taqwa taqwa is the one which describe a person who is conscious in his or her all endeavors in the life with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that even though nobody's watching me nobody's aware of my intentions allah is the watching allah is the one who is aware of my inner feeling and this is where that really the sin is in the sin of heart not in the just apparent and this is where something very important to understand I think this point I learned recently that the Jannah is only promised for the people of Taqwa and there will be spring and gardens and they will be entering them in the peace and tranquility and they will be uh, given take the grudge, the enviousness, the jealousy, the hatred or the negative feeling will be taken out of their heart and they will be clean and pure heart and they will be brother to each other sitting on couches face to face uh, this is when abdullah ibn zubair radiallahu anhum uh, when he's the son of uh, zubair ibn awan who was the cousin of prophet uh, and Ali Radiallahu was a cousin of Prophet. When Zubair Radiallahu in battle of uh, Jamal came against Ali Radiallahu Anhu, and he got killed. Zubair got killed by another person. And Ali Radiallahu reminded him, Zubair, remember when Prophet said that when Ali will be in uh, opposed by people, you should stand by Ali. And he remembered that word. It was the word which Prophet says uh, to one cousin to the another about another cousin, and who happened to be his son-in-law, Ali Radiallahu Anhu, and the fourth Khalifa of Islam. So when Ali Radiallahu reminded Zubair about that, then Zubair left the uh, fight and he walked away. While he was walking away, a, a khawa killed him and his son Abdullah when he meant to uh, Ali radiallahu anhu Ali radiallahu ta'ala said in the day of judgment the grudges between your father and mine will be removed and we will be sitting in front of each other in the paradise so this is one of the things if we if we want to live in world as like we are living in Jannah we should take out the jealousy enviousness and a negative feeling about each other 
which is very difficult. It is almost impossible. You really cannot do that. But Allah SWT is saying that in the Day of Judgment, He will take it out. The heart is clean. You know, it is not impossible, but it is we don't want to do it. Why? Because when لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى We heard it this verse before, that for mankind is nothing but what they strive for. So if we hold grudges, we hold negative feeling, we hold enmity, uh, enviousness or enmity about anybody, it is our choice, right? We can not hate anybody we can let go of things so prophet when i see the life of prophet i see one thing for him having millions was no matter having billions was no matter having no food and poverty was not a matter because this material was supposed to be inherited by allah and it belongs to allah it comes from allah and it's gone back to allah and, and when we give in charity, we do not give any favor to anybody. We do not give any, do any, any uh, superior act to, uh, towards anybody. It is actually ourself because what we give comes back. What we give comes back. Wallahi, take my words, make a deal with Allah. If I get so much, I will spend this much and do not cheat in that matter. You will see that you will never have a less. You will never be deprived. You make a promise, live by the promise. And make an oath with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I will not hold any enviousness, hatred towards Muslim brothers, sisters, or family members, or humanity, or your creatures. We will find that we live in such a peace that people are going to be really ease. The stress of jealousy, stress of hatred, stress of negative feeling destroys physical body. It erodes us. It erodes inside of human being. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising the paradise. They will be sitting without grudges against each other. And no weariness shall touch them. Nor they, they will expel from there. So now you want to live in paradise and not to expel. Then take this thing out. Because enviousness against somebody's success or goodness or, or, or better life is a problem with the divine decree like shaitan was upset that why allah made human wise germs why he didn't make me wise germ so when allah gave somebody wealth and looks and body and uh, energy and a uh, lot of family and prosperity we are saying allah you should we, you should have made me not him and we know that allah is the one who will decide best what one get so when muslim get hardship we should be patient when we get trouble we should be asking for patience and easing up ourselves from the trouble when we know that Imam Hussein was known by Prophet and everybody in the family Ali and Fatima radiallahu anhuma they never asked that oh Allah stop the shahadat of the Imam Hussein they all prayed oh Allah give him patience Allahumma atiha sabra wa ajra they made the dua Allah gave them the sabr patience and the reward of what he is going to go through so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also promising that my punishment is also very painful punishment you know what you can see that when we get a little pain in our back, in our joint, in our body, how we feel. And this will be an eternal pain which people will have, those who disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we are going to begin with the zikr of Ibrahim alayhi salam, which I mentioned in this chapter, uh, the verse number 51 and going onwards. So what conversation we have heard before. And now let's see another con reminder of the Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, a, a little thing I would like to bring to your attention that with Ibrahim al Islam, I was listening to Jewish speaker uh, last week. And this Jewish tradition is that when I listen to this scholar of Juda Judaism, he even made a personal claim that it's my personal understanding, but it's a general understanding. They think that they are chosen people and they think that they are the only chosen people by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this task. According to them, when uh, Adam al Islam, they did not say much about, you know, uh, ideology or, or, or what you call politism or shirk. Uh, they think that the Jewish at one time were doing shirk. Uh, but they were not very strict in obedience with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the Quran, we see that Ibrahim salam, was a monotheist and Islam belongs from Adam alayhi salam to Nuh alayhi salam to Idris alayhi salam to all the prophets down to Ibrahim alayhi salam and then his descendant and Allah made him Imam, the leader of all the nations. And among them, this is one of the people of Shu'ib alayhi salam, his third uh, uh, wife, Qatura's son. Uh, descended, his name was Madian, and that one, uh, that's why it's called Madayan, and that's where it came, the Arabic tradition on that side, that was the one prophet came in Arabs from that side. The other one came in the Jewish or the Israel or Bani Israel or Israelites, uh, that is from the Ishaq to Yaqub to Yusuf, and about four or five hundred years later from them down to the Musa alayhi salam, then who took them out from the bondage and had the exodus, and then from there came down the, all the other prophets till John the Baptist Zechariah, his father, and uh, Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, the son of Mary. So this is how the genealogy of Islam goes, but 
all of these prophets, we own them. We own them. Humanity is from Adam. We own him. So humanity is owned by Islam. Noah was the second one or the Noah Islam and we own him. He is our prophet. Those people who joined him in the in the boat were Muslims. Then Ibrahim al-Islam was a Muslim. He was not a Jew. He was neither a Jew. Ibrahim was not a Jew nor a Christian. He was a monotheistic believer of one God. And then he has, Allah blessed him with the first issue. Ishmael, uh, son of Hajra and Is Ibrahim, and the second son Isaac or Ishaq, son of Sarah and Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decide whoever he wants, wherever he wants, however he wants. Um, so let's listen to this, what happened when the angels came to him for destruction of the Lut, of the nation of the Lut al Islam, his nephew, who was being appointed as a pro of the prophet in that land, which is known as Salmon and Gomorrah in English language. And let's listen to this conversation. <laughs> and tell them about the guests of Ibrahim. When they visited him, they greeted him with salam, peace on you. He said, we are scared of you. They said, do not be scared. We give you good news of a boy who will be knowledgeable. He said, do you give me the good news despite the old age has befallen me? So what good news you are giving to me? They said, we have given to you the good news of the fact. So do not be one of those who lose hope. He said, who can lose hope in the mercy of his Lord except those who have lost the straight path? He said, then, what is your mission, O messenger? They said, we have been sent to a sinful people. Except the family of Lot, all of whom we shall save. But his wife. We have ordained that she will be among those who will remain behind. So we'll stop here today. So verse number 60 talks about when um, Allah's angels came to destroy the nation of Lut and uh, except his wife and his daughters were saved. Uh, their Quran and Bible have a little uh, different uh, presentation. I uh, just want to bring it to the attention. Probably I mentioned it before. I don't remember. Uh, the, according to the, the to the Bible that Lut al-Islam, when he left, uh, these angels destroy the people who are trying to be rude and disrespectful to to the to to the angels. Uh, his wife was left behind. Uh, she was joining with them, but when she turned to look back, which was told not to turn back, and she was also turned into a rock or sometimes a statue. Uh, when where the Quran and Bible and respect and honor and incest is mentioned um, in the Quran versus uh, Bible. In the Bible, this is that those two daughters, when they left with him, they uh, found no man and they could not be married. So they intoxicated their father and they did commit the act of sex and got pregnant, which is absolutely not prophetic because they knew and we knew and according to those people knew and Noah Lut al-Islam knew that this is a time of where Ibrahim was nearby and all the people existed. So this is kind of a disrespect and very sin sinful district description about Prophet and his daughter, Prophet Lut, who was happened to be the nephew of Ibrahim al-Islam and he knew the law and their daughter would not commit some sin. So for Islamic point of view, they went and they were saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these people were destroyed. And there are a lot of description that the Dead Sea area, which we see in the in the Middle East, that is the plan, which is known as Salmon and Gomorrah, uh, where these people lived. With this, I will stop now, inshallah. Next Sunday, we will begin. And uh, if you have any question, any comment, please 
ask otherwise we will stop here and next sunday we will continue with the verse number 61 to start our program